Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is going to be kind of connected to our stroker series, but I want to talk to you today about compression ratio. Uh, a lot of people talk about compression ratio and how it affects power and how much I can actually get away with and so forth, but they don't really, they don't really fully understand how to figure out what the compression ratio is going to be or even what compression ratio is. So just to give you a little bit of insight, I thought we'd talk about that a little bit today. There's some things that you need to know in order to figure out what your compression ratio is. Um, but first of all, let's talk about what it is. So I have a few drawings here that hopefully will make this make a little bit more sense. So basically what we have when we start looking at our engine is we have a, we have a cylinder. So we have our <clears throat> cylinder here, we have a piston and a connecting rod in the cylinder. We have a combustion chamber up here on the cylinder head and so forth. So what you need to understand is basically compression ratio is a comparison of two volumes. Compression ratio is a comparison of the volume above top dead center with the cylinder head on. You see we've got our spark plug and our valves here. So this combustion chamber up here on top of this <clears throat> uh, engine, the chamber in the head actually has a volume to it and we measure that in cc's or cubic centimeters. So we have to take that into consideration because the size of that combustion chamber is definitely a factor in compression ratio. So once we figure out what the cc's of our chamber is or what head we're using, um, we're going to use that <clears throat> as one of our, our calculating factors and we can change heads and we can get different. There's all sorts of combustion chambers. This is a small block Ford chamber. It's a uh, pretty small chamber. It was their higher compression head. And if you compare this to some of the other chambers that they had, this is also a small block Ford chamber, but it's obvious that it's a bigger. So we have a bigger chamber volume here, which makes the... Uh, makes the compression ratio lower. So the chamber volume is definitely a factor in compression ratio. Combustion chamber volumes like you just saw for different compression ratios. Okay, so <clears throat> what is compression ratio? Compression ratio, or what we call static compression ratio, is basically a comparison of two volumes in the cylinder. So let's say, hypothetically, if I could do this, this is the easiest way I've found to explain this. I run my piston, I put the engine together, I put the cylinder head on it and so forth, and I run my piston all the way up to uh, top dead center. Now top dead center is the highest point of travel for the piston. It's the highest point of travel. So I have that at top dead center and then I take uh, a liquid like water or something and I just fill this whole area above the piston up here with water. I fill it up with water. Once I fill that up with water and I have this entire area full, I take the water back out of there and I put it into a container that I can use to measure the volume of that water. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, once I get that water out of there, is I'm going to take and I'm going to run my piston down to its lowest point of travel, which is bottom dead center. And I still have my cylinder head and so forth up here. I'm also, at this point, going to take and fill the cylinder and the chamber, this entire area, all the way to the top, from the top of the piston down here. I'm going to fill this all up with water. Okay? Then I'm going to take and I'm going to pull that water out of there and I'm also going to put it into another container that is very similar to the first container. So now what I have done, and this is not really the way we check it, <clears throat> I'm just explaining it to you this way so you can understand what it is. So now what we have is we have a couple of containers, a couple of jars that have measuring increments in them. So first, the, the first uh, amount of water that I put in goes into this jar and this is basically how much fit in there. Then I ran my piston down to bottom dead center and I filled that area up and this is how much water I got out of it. Now to figure out compression ratio I simply have to compare this 
to this. Or in other words, how many of these right here will fit into this one volume? If I can fit eight of these into this one volume, my compression ratio is eight to one. If I can fit 10 of these into this one volume, or in other words, if 10 of these equal that much liquid, then it would be 10 to one. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. What we are doing with compression ratio is we're simply comparing two volumes in the cylinder. Now, the smaller the first volume and the larger the second volume, the higher the compression ratio. Because if I have more volume over here, such as in the case of the stroker, see with the stroker engine, we're adding about a quarter inch to the stroke, which makes this volume over here larger. And if I have the same cylinder head on that volume, I'm going to be able to fit more of these into this volume because this volume will be bigger. So stroking an engine, if all things are equal, let's say I use the same cylinder heads I had with the shorter stroke, but I add a longer stroke down here, that's going to raise the compression ratio of the engine. And this is something that you have to consider with a stroker engine. So as far as compression ratio goes, calculating compression ratio, now there is a, a formula that you could write out and you could get a calculator and you could do it, but Nobody really does that anymore because I'm going to show you a really cool compression ratio calculator and it's actually not my calculator. It's one that I've I found <clears throat> online. Um, RB Machine is a, is a company that's kind of made this available for everybody if you Google it. It's, the title of it is RSR Compression Ratio Calculator. It's the best one I've found. They did a really good job of setting it up. So it's a, the, they really know what they're doing. Okay, so the things that I have to understand or the, or the things that I have to know before I can calculate compression ratio. Number one, I have to know the bore size of the engine. I have to know the bore size. The second thing I need to know is the stroke of the engine. Now the stroke of the engine, the stroke of the engine is, is actually the definition of a stroke is how far the piston travels from top to bottom or from bottom to top. Okay, so that distance, how far did that piston travel? When it left the top dead center of the cylinder and it traveled all the way to the bottom, how far was that travel? That's the stroke of the engine. One stroke is how far the piston travels in one direction. I also need to know my gasket thickness. Now the reason that you need to know your gasket thickness is because if you look at this and you think about it, gasket thickness is a factor. So I kind of separated the cylinder head away. These are all going to be stacked onto each other and sitting on each other on the engine. But if you look at, at the blue line that's in between the cylinder head up here and the red line, which is the block deck, that is my gasket. Now gaskets come in different thicknesses. They have what they call a compressed thickness. Once that gasket is torqued, it takes up space between the block and the head. So if I have a thicker gasket in here, that's actually going to hold the chamber or make the chamber larger because it's going to move the chamber further away from the top of the piston. If I have a thinner gasket in here, the chamber is actually going to sit down lower, closer to the piston, which is going to make this area up here smaller. So the gasket thickness is actually a, a definitely a factor that you have to think about when we talk about compression ratio. Another one is deck clearance. So deck clearance, we see deck clearance right here, and these are all the factors that we have to consider. Deck clearance, for those of you who don't know what it is, is how far down in the cylinder the piston sits when it is at top dead center. So most engines, when the piston comes up to TDC here, if you look at the top of the piston here, and then you look at the top of the deck up here, you'll see there's a space there. So the distance from the top dead center of the piston to the deck of the engine is my deck height. And of course, if I have less deck height here, right, that's going to make this area smaller. If I have more deck height, the piston sits down further, that's going to make the area up here bigger, which is going to affect compression ratio. 
Most engines have 30 to 40 thousandths deck clearance from the factory. So this area here between the top of the deck and the top of the piston, my deck clearance is a factor. So I'm going to factor the thickness of my gasket. I'm going to factor the distance of my deck clearance into this because that all determines the size of this chamber up here, or this first volume. The other thing is the combustion chamber volume itself. So the combustion chamber volume here, that is actually the size of this combustion chamber volume. There's different size chambers. And so depending on whether you have a smaller chamber or a bigger chamber measured in cc's, different heads have different chambers like those Ford heads you just saw. Two heads that go on the same basic engine, but we have two completely different chamber sizes for different compression ratios. The, another factor is piston top volume. Now, the piston top volume, if you take a look at these, you can see that there's a difference. So, all three of those pistons, they have a, they have a different volume um, depending on the configuration of each one of those pistons. This is what we would consider a flat top piston. It is. It does have four valve reliefs in it, but um, <clears throat> nevertheless, this is a flat top piston. We can contrast that flat top with a dish piston. This piston also has the four valve reliefs in it, but if you see, it has a, a dish. This whole area is dished out, which makes this a lower compression piston. And then of course we have our dome piston. If you look at the top of this piston, it has a pop-up or a dome, which is definitely going to give me a rise in compression ratio. So once you, once you figure out all those factors, what piston you're going to use, and the cool thing about the compression ratio calculator that I'm going to show you here in a minute, <clears throat> is that you can... Uh, before you even spend any money at all on a part, you will have a really good idea of which piston you need, what thickness gasket you need, what machine work, if any, that you're going to do, uh, what stroke crank you're going to use, and the combination of parts that you need to put together to hit a target compression ratio. On pump gas, a carbureted engine like this 383, you want to stick to about 9.5 to 1 if you're going to run you know pump gas with this thing any anything above that the problem with going too high in compression ratio yes it does make more power but you run into a real problem with the fuel that we have to contend with if you're going to run pump gas boy i tell you, you you really don't want to run 11 to 1 compression or 12 to 1 compression so you're going to have major pre-ignition and detonation and it's going to damage the engine you're going to have to retard your timing super far to get the thing to even run on pump gas so unless you're planning on spending anywhere from $7 to $15 per gallon for race fuel, you probably want to keep the compression ratio around 9.5 to 1. On the stroker engine, this is something that we really have to think about. Uh, normally with a stroker piston, we are definitely going to go with a dished type piston because we want to lower that compression if we're running on pump gas. We also want to be careful what cylinder heads we put on there. Uh, generally. Now, aftermarket heads, if you're buying, you know, RHS or Dart or whatever, you can pretty much, there's a lot of different uh, cylinder head choices that you can go with. And if you get on here and you play with the compression ratio calculator, you can know going in what cylinder head volume or CC volume that you need in order to get the correct compression ratio. So hopefully that makes sense. And, and, and if, you, if you have any questions on this, I can definitely answer them. But I want to get into this compression ratio calculator. Okay, so on this compression ratio calculator, all you need to do is just go to the internet. So we'll just uh, open up a new tab in Google here. And we're going to type in RSR space Compression ratio. See, and it's already showing up right there. It's this one I hear it just showed up. So just open that up, click on it, and you're going to come to a page that looks like this. Now it gives you some information on here. It's kind of cool because he, he talks about how all of the things that you need to do to be able to calculate compression ratio. 
so it's 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 kind of a neat deal but over on the left here if you look at this left column here what you'll notice is you have some boxes that we can actually auto fill with our sizes so all of those things that I talked to you about I talked to you about the bore size and the and the, the stroke and so forth and the head gasket thickness and the deck clearance and the piston top volume and the combustion chamber volume so if we had a stock 350 engine let's just take a stock 350 and we'll put the I'm just gonna fill in the values for a 350 Chevy that we will typically see um, so on the bore size you're gonna have a a four inch bore so we just put four inches the stroke of a small block Chevrolet 350 is 3.480 the head gasket thickness is generally about 45 thousandths the deck height is usually around 35 on a Chevy and we'll just leave the piston top volume alone because we'll just say it has flat top pistons in it which most of them did in the early days anyway and the stock combustion chamber volume for a Chevrolet for the early heads is 76 so we'll take a look and we'll go ahead down here and hit calculate and we calculated the compression ratio down at the bottom and what we came up with is 8.7 to 1 8.7 to 1 so we put all of those values that we talked about in there and we came up with 8.7 to 1 now on the stroker engine guess what we're doing we have to go back to the stroke and we're going to change the stroke and we're going to put our stroker crank in here we're not going to change anything on here all we're going to do is calculate the new stroke that we're adding so three 0 0.750 three and three quarter is our new stroke and then we go down here and we look at we look at our calculate box right here I haven't hit that yet all I did was I changed the stroke from a 350 to a 383 stroke and I'm gonna hit calculate and see what it did to that compression ratio so if all things are equal and I put a stroker crank in it is going to raise the compression ratio because it's making that first volume bigger and there's a pretty good explanation on this website of all that if you look up here you can see that it talks about the piston dome volume and the and the the, the volume above the piston and so forth and the head gasket thickness and the deck clearance and all that so that's compression ratio in a nutshell so before you ever build an engine one of the things that you need to do is calculate your compression ratio unfortunately you know some people when they put they, they they put the engines together they build the stroker or whatever and they don't consider this and they end up having either too high or too low of a compression ratio usually it's too high and they have major detonation and they can't get the thing uh, to make any power because they can't run any timing they got to retard their timing so bad and they're you know they're standing there scratching their heads going you know what the heck you know why <laughs> why am I having so many problems with this motor it's because they didn't take into consideration that the compression ratio is going to change when they change these components and build a stroker so that's compression ratio in a nutshell like I said if you have any questions feel free to ask and if you uh, go ahead and subscribe below if you're interested I'm doing a complete 383 stroker build from start to finish we're actually in the process of filming that right now and uh, lots of machine shop type videos so hopefully this helped give you some understanding on compression ratio I know many of you out there you've spoken those words you've said compression ratio but really didn't fully understand what it was well now you know thanks for watching we'll see you next time